Next, we'll follow it up with another simple question. Uh, for what value of lambda? For what value of lambda does the line y equal to x plus lambda touch or touches 9x square plus 16 y square is 144? Let me call it what values. It may have multiple values. So please type in your response in the chat box. Plus or minus 5. Absolutely correct. Absolutely. So you can write this as x squared by 16, y squared by 9 equal to 1. And you know that c squared is equal to uh, a squared, m squared, okay, plus b squared, which is 9. So x lambda is plus minus 5. Great. So moving on next, which is the concept of equation of tangents in various forms. Equation of tangents in various forms. In various forms. So a little while ago, we saw the equation of a tangent in slow form. That was y equal to mx plus minus under root a square m square plus b square this was called the slow form okay second is the point form point form is basically a case where you have been given a point and you have been asked to sketch or draw the equation or write the equation of a tangent at any point let's say this is the point x1 comma y1 and you are sketching a tangent at this point and you have to write the equation of this tangent uh, let's take the, the equation to be the standard form itself. Okay. By the way, this only works for the standard form. And in this case, the equation will become x, x1 by a square plus y, y1 by b square equal to 1. Please note that this expression would be referred to by the symbol t henceforth. Okay. Right? So this is called the point form of the equation of a tangent. Remember, there's a generalization that is going on over here. We normally substitute x square with xx1, y square with yy1, xy with xy1 plus x1y by 2. We generalize x with x plus x1 by 2, y with y plus y1 by 2, and c remains c. So even if your equation of the uh, the ellipse is a standard, is a general form like this. Even if the equation is a general form like this, then you have to find the equation of a tangent at x, x1 point. Sorry, tangent as x1, y1 point. Then it will be replaced in this fashion. All right. Next is Theta. Guys, can you see the screen? And be saying about when I was discussing with you the equation of the chord connecting two eccentric points, theta and phi. And this form is called the parametric form, and it's the most widely used form when we are referring to the equation of the tangent to a parabola at a parametric point. All right. So uh, let us take questions on these. So done the various form of the equation of a tangent to the parabola, uh, sorry, tangent to the ellipse. So let us take up some questions. Product of the from the foci, from the foci of any tangent of any tangent to an ellipse to an ellipse is equal to the square of the semi minor axis is equal to the square of the semi minor axis semi minor axis 
okay and the feet of these perpendicular and the feet of these perpendicular lie on the oxygen It has to be remembered as a theorem itself because it's very very important this question says product of the perpendiculars from the foci on any tangent of the ellipse is equal to the square of the semi minor axis and the locus of the feet of these perpendicular lie on the auxiliary circle so guys i am sure if you uh, talk about the standard case of an ellipse you know the auxiliary circle for this the auxiliary circle for this is basically x square plus y square is equal to a square auxiliary circle is a circle which is drawn as uh, sorry uh, drawn as the major axis as the diameter which i had already discussed with you while i was discussing the eccentric form all right guys uh, so i'm going to just uh, exhibit on geogebra um, how the locus of the feet of the perpendicular drawn from the foci is basically going to uh, be the auxiliary circle okay so i'll just type in any uh, any para, uh, any equation of an ellipse which is let's say x square x square uh, divided by 9 plus uh, y square uh, divided by 4 equal to 1 okay so let's say this is the ellipse that you have in front of you yeah okay so let's look at the foci so focus of this conic c i want so there is the focus for you a and b right now i'll choose any point on the ellipse let's say i choose a point c and i draw a tangent i draw a tangent to this ellipse okay next i sketch a perpendicular okay as you can see this is a perpendicular and this is the point of d is the point where the perpendicular from the uh, foci okay uh, meets the tangent at c right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, simply move this point okay but i'm moving this point you see d is also moving right now in order to better locate d i would actually show you the trace of that okay so let me start moving the c slowly and slowly and slowly just watch the moment just watch the movement of the point d on your screen you would realize that the path traced by d is just going to be a circle okay and that circle is going to be such a way that it's going to have the diameter as the the major axis of the ellipse which we actually call as the auxiliary circle which we actually call as the auxiliary circle look how beautifully it is coming up okay wow right so do you see an auxiliary circle being formed which is x square plus y square is equal to a square and that is what we have to mathematically prove as well we have to prove that mathematically as well so first let us let me do the uh, the last part of the question that is the feet of these perpendicular is going to be the auxiliary circle so we all know for uh, y x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 we can write a tangent as y equal to mx uh, plus let me take any one tangent okay which means y minus mx is under root of a square m square plus b square now let me ask you what would be the equation of a line equation of a line through 
ae comma 0 and perpendicular to perpendicular to y equal to mx plus under root a square m square plus b square so if i ask you this your response will be plain and simple it's going to be y minus 0 is equal to minus m that is the negative reciprocal of the slope x minus a which means x plus my is equal to ae now from these two equations equation number one and two i need to eliminate m so let's eliminate one let's eliminate m from equation number one and two let's eliminate m from equation number one and two so guys just watch carefully what i'm going to do i'm going to just square one and square two and add them so one square and two square and i'm going to add them so one square is going to be y minus mx square and uh, we have got this term and on the right hand side we're going to get a square m square plus b square plus a square e square okay so let's expand this up let's expand this up so you get y square m square x square minus 2 mxy and here we get x square m square y square plus 2 mxy and this is going to be a square m square plus b square plus a square e square so these two terms will get cancelled off so these two terms will get cancelled off you just take y square common and x square common you get 1 plus m square x square plus y square and on the right hand side i get a square m square plus b square now please note that all of you please remember that a square e square is actually nothing but a square minus b square right remember in your school days you used to call this as c square equal to a square minus b square in your ncrt syllabus correct so i'm going to use the same expansion for this term at least so this will be a square minus b square as you can see b square and b square gets cancelled off and this is what i'll be left with guys what is important is not the result what is important is how you deal with these locus questions i'm again repeating time and again that j loves locus so how you know how the concept with respect to locus formation should be very very clear in your mind right so this is the equation of the auxiliary circle of the ellipse this is the equation of the auxiliary circle of the ellipse right now our next part of the question was we have to prove that the product of the slopes we have to prove that the product of the slopes is going to be b square sorry uh, product of the perpendiculars is going to be b square so again <coughs> again uh, let's take y equal to mx plus under root a square m square plus b square and uh, let us take the point to be a e comma 0 okay so we we have two points a e comma 0 s1 and s2 and from these two points i have to draw perpendiculars to this uh, tangent and find the product of their perpendiculars so we'll use uh, the the distance of a point from a line so let me take the y on the uh, the other side so let me write it like this this goes off minus y okay yeah so when you substitute a comma zero you get to see um mod a square m square b square plus m a e by under root of one plus m square and p2 would be mod under root a square m square plus b square minus m a e by under root one square plus m square right so let's take the product p1 into p2 p1 into p2 that would give you mod of remember inside is x plus y x minus y so it becomes x square minus y square x square minus y square by 1 plus m square okay yes or no 
Now again, using the fact that a square e square is actually a square minus b square. So it becomes a square m square plus b square minus m square a square minus b square mod by 1 plus m square. If you open the brackets, if you open the brackets, you get a uh, b square 1 plus m square mod. Mod doesn't have any meaning over here because every term is positive. So it's actually b square, which is nothing but, which is nothing but the semi minor axis length, the whole square. Very, very important uh, theorem over here. Is that fine, guys? Any doubt whatsoever, please type it in the chat box. If no doubt, please type no doubt.